The problem, of course, and particularly when you go back to the Lebanese pound, is there's no longer any policy anchor. Um, you don't have any certainty with respect to monetary policy, fiscal policy. You haven't had the reforms that the government came in and promised. And on top of all that, um, you've got a regional situation which is not helping, particularly the Caesar Act in Syria. So you've got a combination both of domestic factors and external factors that are not helping Lebanon at all. And finally, policymakers have not gotten together to address the requirements of dealing with the IMF. The IMF needs a government that owns policy reforms, that owns what it says it wants to do. You don't go and approach the IMF with a distorted, divided negotiating team, which is what you've had. So an Henri Shaul, a former director, director general of the Ministry of, of Finance, both have resigned because there's no appetite for reform. There doesn't seem to be political courage to address Lebanon's problems. You've got a Ponzi scheme that has burst. This Ponzi scheme was the animal created by the central bank. It is now burst. And Lebanon, unfortunately, is becoming what I'm now calling Libazuela. That is very unfortunate. Poverty rates, you've been there, you've seen well, it. Well, it's essentially Poverty rates moving towards authority. failed state status, isn't it? I mean, what happens if we hit that point? I mean, and, and what will be the, the determining factor there, right? Because at the end of the day, the only seemingly organized force within the country is Hezbollah. I mean, I'm curious when we're going to see people out on the street, because when I was there over the weekend, it was extremely quiet. But nobody was happy, already, and the prices were think, were surging, already, as you know, at the supermarket. Right, you're already dealing with a you're already already dealing with a failed state, because there's no policy being enacted. Parliament is not serious about undertaking and agreeing to economic reforms, deep fiscal reform, imposition, say, of capital controls. We have to unify the exchange rate. We have to undertake an audit of the central bank. All these series of measures require really policymakers to get together and to agree to that. They have not. They have not done so so far. I don't know when it's going to explode. So Henry was saying uh, that this was a bankocracy, not a democracy, right? <laughs> I think. I think there's very much. There's very much to that. The problem, of course, is that when you talk about explosion in the street. The politicians are very good at diverting the issues and starting to talk about 8th versus 14th of March, dividing it along sectarian and confessional lines. You know, we, we, we've seen that and it, and it repeats itself. And unfortunately, the Iraq, the protest movement, has not been able to deal with those divisions. And then they send a fifth column. Whenever you have these protests, you get a fifth column coming in. It becomes violent, whereas the protests have never really been violent. But you've got elements which come in as a fifth column. And that is very unfortunate. Clearly, the political class uh, does not want to see reform. They consider reform as suicide.